embrace what the body's healing. In fact, my favorite motto is that your body is a self-healing miracle. You are listening to The Dr. Haley Show, the podcast dedicated to helping you optimize your health. Each episode, there will be an interview or a message to help you discover better health. We will be featuring health radicals on the show to bring new ideas to the table, as well as doubling down on key fundamentals to support you living your best life. Your host is no other than the founder of Haley Nutrition, Dr. Michael Haley. This is the Dr. Haley Show podcast. I'm Dr. Michael Haley, your show host, and today's guest is Bob Ross. Bob was in a doctoral program at a medical school in medical physics to treat cancer patients when he was diagnosed with a brain tumor. He made some mistakes along the way and learned from them. He reveals his secrets to help healing in his free 45-minute online masterclass found at thehiddensecrettohealing.com. I personally took his masterclass and actually absorbed it at a 2x play speed and finished in about 23 minutes. For me, it was a good reminder of the principles for healing and health. I would recommend playing it at the normal speed, though. <laughs> Let's get into the podcast. Bob Ross, this is the Dr. Haley Show. Thank you for joining me. I'm Mike Haley, by the way. This is our formal introduction. We just found out that you're on the West Coast. I'm on the East Coast in the United States here. I already had lunch. You're probably doing breakfast. Do you have breakfast? I like fruits I know a for lot breakfast. Of people... Fruits for breakfast. Okay. Yeah. Bananas, well, that's good. Apples, yeah. You know, for, for me, I'm like one of those guys, maybe a, a cup of organic coffee with some uh, maybe fat in it to kind of sustain me. And then my first meal comes lunchtime-ish. And what did I have? A baked potato. Nice, big <laughs> baked potato. Nothing too fancy. Nothing too exciting. You know, I heard that you had a history of cancer and it was in the brain cancer. Mm -hmm. That's all cleared up now, right? Yeah. Well, yes. Uh, it's quite the story. I don't know if we have time for it, but. Uh... I, I want to get into it. But before getting into that and what you did about it, I want to know a little bit about you growing up and maybe possibly what led up to some of the trials in your life. And, and we'll dig in a little deep because I, I believe there's a, a cause for everything. And that's the good news, because when there's a cause and we can identify it, then we can get rid of the cause and deal with it. There you go. So tell me a little bit of, uh, about your life. I, I understand that you have some years as a firefighter and you're still involved with the department. And what came before that? What led up to that? Tell me about your life. So the interesting thing, when I was about six years old, I had a passion for helping people. So I had a little siren on my bicycle. I'd ride around the neighborhood bandaging people up, even if they didn't need it, which was very ironic because my father was a mortician and his father was a mortician. It was a family business. I was the oldest boy. I was supposed to be a mortician. And instead I went into wow. medicine. So according to my father, I went to the dark side. Oh, God. Or, or is it the light side? Because in medicine, you're figuring out the cause of the reason they saw everyone else in your family. Exactly. So I got in a big award from the fire department for bringing back somebody from the dead. And uh, my dad put his arm around me, and said, son, your mother and I are so proud of you and all the life saving awards you've won. But son, you're bad for business. Daddy, oh, that's the best compliment <laughs> you can give me. <laughs> <laughs> That's great. So, and my mom was actually a professional musician. She played multiple instruments, beautiful soprano voice, had perfect pitch. I played trumpet, guitar, and piano growing up. So I'd be in the living room playing the piano, and she'd be in the kitchen. Bob, that should have been a C sharp. So oh, she'd boy. hear a note, tell you what note it was. I was just unbelievable. So when I went to college, I started as a double major in physics and music because my grandfather was a famous research chemist. I think there are 150 patents in our family line. And I've always loved science, I always loved music. But I found out that was a six year program full time. If you do music and physics, because you start from day one, it's not two years of, you know, general stuff, start from day one, and they all have afternoon labs. So my first week of college, I had to make a decision. Do I get a degree in physics to get a degree in music? And uh, so I got a degree in physics because I knew I could always do my music. I have to say something about that. I have to say sure. something about the physics because that's the course that 
weeds everyone out of becoming a physician. It's prerequisites. You know, you're going to take your organic chemistry and your physics. And if you can get through these, then you can come into medical school or whatever healthcare profession you want to right. study. And it, it literally is the weeding out. You're not cut out for this. True. <laughs> so it tells me a little bit about your brain. Ah. Because you chose not to take one course to get into a medical school. That was your study. Right. That was my study. And I graduated with distinction in nuclear physics. It was like a mini PhD, original research dissertation, had a committee, the whole defense of the thesis, the whole thing in college. And when I was there, I found out about the field of medical physics and in particular, uh, cancer treatment. And in fact, I got accepted, one, one, only one of three people accepted into Harvard's doctoral program in medical physics, and I turned them down. I know that's what my mom, let's look at my mom's face. What? I did because they were primarily focused, once you got your doctorate, they wanted you to go into research, which is important. We need that. But I'm a people person. I wanted to treat people that had cancer. So I went to another very prestigious medical school program for that. And when I was there, I helped make one of the biggest breakthroughs probably ever in cancer therapy, and it's called the hyperthermia effect. So we discovered if you increase the yeah, if you increase the temperature of cancer cells, it made them weaker, right? So just heat up the body. Infrared nowadays is great because it goes even deeper, right? Just a couple of degrees. And obviously it'd be less chemo, less radiation would be necessary if you did that. And it primarily got suppressed. Mm. By in the United States. Suppressed by the a... medical establishment. American okay the, wait, yeah okay yeah now does that does that happen in like coding meaning uh we're not going to recognize it as an uh, insurance billable how does it get suppressed so you can't do it kind of the board decides if right. you do this you lose your license type thing yeah that's my understanding and and of course since you're using less chemo and less radiation it cut into profits, et cetera. So I was so disappointed. I was so disappointed. Now, the good news is, you know, we were published and peer reviewed. So if you go to anywhere in the world where it's not for profit, medicine isn't for profit, like Germany, East Asia, uh, the cancer clinics in Mexico, first thing they'll do is heat your body up. Okay? In fact, after our discovery, they discovered that viruses have the same hyperthermia effect. So if you heat up a virus, it makes it weaker which is exactly why our body gives us a fever. Sure. Makes it easier for the immune system to take care of it. And yet, that's not really taught in medical school that I know of even if, as of today, because if you call your physician, say, hey, doc, I got a, a fever of 101, right? What's he going to tell you? Oh, take some aspirin, cut the fever. Take Tylenol, cut the fever. Exactly backwards. Right. You know, without saying what it was, a few years ago, I had that thing that was going around. Mm -hmm. And... I chose to kind of bundle up. Now I had the chills, which was my body saying, okay, bundle up. We're going to raise your temperature a little bit. And I probably did overdo it because I actually fell asleep that way. And I was, you know, miserable and weak. And it, it was this virus that was going around at the time. And I actually heated myself up so much that I woke up nauseous. And I remember cr literally crawling you know, naked on the floor to the, I was going to, I was going to vomit. Yeah. And I passed out seconds before landing on the cold floor, which cooled me down and then woke me back up. And I felt great. Nausea was gone. And I felt literally healed. <laughs> it was one of those things where, okay, you just got over it. You cooked yourself, you cooked the virus and now you are well. Now, the symptoms lagged a little bit because when you have something like that, there's toxins in your body that you have to deal with and, and clear, and they were still right. there. Much like when you have pertussis, the bacteria infection is gone, but for weeks later, you'll be continuing to clear the toxins that are left over from it. So that was my experience, and it was one of those things like, okay, the fever is there, it is your friend, there's a good reason for it, and it's just backwards to try to suppress an immune response. Right. And the, your body does have a, like a thermostat feature to 
make it so it doesn't go too high. That's why you have to keep an eye on it because if it goes above like 104, then it can continue up and that's when you have, you know, negative effects on the brain. Um, but that's very rare. So embrace what the body's healing. In fact, my favorite motto is that your body is a self-healing miracle. If you cut yourself, the only thing we have to do to help the body is apply some direct pressure and it does, it clots it up, it seals it. A lot of times there's not even a scar. I mean, break a bone. Right. You know, the doctor doesn't heal you, your broken bone. He puts the edges together, secures it. And who heals your broken bone? You do. Who, I mean, that's just... It, it's whatever, whatever has been turning peanut butter and jelly into who we are today. <laughs> Assembling the things that we put in this hole and chew up and swallow and somehow turning it into more of us. Yeah. And what can we do? Our knowledge is like this compared to the knowledge of the life that's in us that is doing all these things. We can we can give it good nutrition. We can give it good exercise, good rest, good mental well-being and try to decompress the stress out of our lives. Give it the things that we need so it can work better. Yeah. We can work with it, not against it. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. So interestingly enough, when I was uh, in that medical school program in medical physics, I was having difficulty waking up. It's called hypersomnia. So insomnia where you can't fall asleep. I couldn't wake up and it was getting worse and worse and worse. So when I woke up, I, I would sometimes be disoriented like it was in the middle of the night, even though I had slept for eight hours. So I went in to see a neurologist and he did some exams and he did a uh, EKG on my uh, EEG, ECG on the brain, look at my brain activity and uh, EKG. I'm so used to the ones for the heart and a CAT scan and so forth. And he, he calls me in and it's like from the movies. He said, Bob, I've got good news and bad news. I said, well, let's start with the good news. He says, well, the good news is your brain waves were abnormal. Uh, that sounds bad. Well, compared to the bad news, it is good news. Oh boy. And put my CAT scan up on the viewfinder right said you know you've got a brain tumor and it was the left temporal lobe that can affect sleep so that makes sense he says but the downside is because where it's located if we try surgically to go in uh there's a good chance we'll make you a vegetable so we're going to put you in a, uh, an intensive care unit for about eight days we're going to implant electrodes right on your brain with no anesthesia yeah so now, the good thing about being in the program at the time is I treated myself like a patient, like a patient of mine. So I was doing deep research and all this. So it kind of helped me process. And of course, then when I went, got an intensive care and they did all that stuff, um, it was really barbaric. But, you know, they were doing what they needed to do. Uh, that's when the reality hit of what was going on. So at the end of, of the seven, eight days, they had all the specialists gather and go through all, and they were recording my brain waves, everything for, for all seven, eight days and 24 hours a day. And they said, well, Bob, we've got good news and bad news again. I said, okay, good news, please, first. So it turns out it's not cancerous. So it's a fluid-filled mass. And it looks like you, well, first off, they, they didn't know what it looked like. So they said, so we're, we're very confused because during the eight days, it there wasn't any effect on your sleep. We couldn't see any indication that was affecting your sleep, which doesn't make sense. That's the bad news. So we're still kind of in a quandary. So we're just kind of wait and see and watch it. So I got home. And of course, the only social thing I had when I was in graduate school was church on Sunday. That was about it. So my Aunt Betty comes over to visit me when I get out of the hospital. And she comes and says, Bob, I smell natural gas. I don't smell anything. Oh, Bob, I think you've got a gas leak. No, I don't smell anything. I'm calling the gas company. No, don't do that. So she does. And sure enough, I had a natural gas leak near my bedroom that started so small that I couldn't detect it. And you get acclimated to smells, right? So as the leak got bigger and bigger, I wasn't aware I was suffocating every night. Okay. And I was going to suggest that possibly your sense of smell was interfered with but maybe maybe not but well, my my sense of smell you know, was fine believe... it, it just was that when it started it was so faint that i didn't detect it and you get acclimated i remember commonplace okay yeah, i remember as a kid we had neighbors who lived across the street and their house stunk i mean it was just whoo 
And I had to ask my friends, hey, John, so doesn't the smell bother you? I don't, there's no smell in my house. So they actually got acclimated to that. Anyways, so it turns out, and then finally they said, so our, our when I told them what, about the gas leak, and he said, well, that makes sense about the hypersomnia. And so we, what we think happened is you had a traumatic birth process and that that brain issue was actually formed during the birth process. You've had it all your life. Your brain has adapted. So part of my brain doesn't exist. And yet I got a degree in nuclear physics. What? <laughs> right? Uh, it's just, just amazing. You enjoying the show thus far? One of the many health secrets that we have covered on the show is all around aloe vera. Specifically, drinking raw aloe vera. Our aloe vera has helped our customers effectively heal their gut, increase their intestine health, lower inflammation in the body, eliminate and or decrease acid reflux, have glowing skin and hair, and so much more. Now, as a frequent member of our audience, you will be exposed to exclusive specials and coupon codes for the awesome products manufactured by Haley Nutrition. That's right, for simply being awesome and tuning in, you can get a mini discount to help you optimize and better your health. To see how we can help and support you on your health journey, tune into the episodes and listen for coupon codes that you can use at www.haleynutrition.com before you make your orders of raw aloe vera. Once again, it's www.haleynutrition.com. Now, back to the show. So I, I spent seven years there and I finished my internship and I was so disheartened that we weren't helping the body heal. Traditional cancer therapy wasn't helping the body heal. It was almost like treating cancer like it was a, an invader from another planet, right? So we have to blast it with radiation and poison it. And, and well, that can kill the invader. But the truth is cancer cells are our own cells that just converted. So, and again, you're right, we want to know cause, right? If you get to the cause. My favorite example of that is let's say you moved into a new apartment and little did you know that there's a piece of radioactive cobalt underneath the floor in your bedroom. Okay? So you're getting exposed every night and you get cancer, you go get treated, now cancer free. But if you don't solve that cobalt, radioactive cobalt that's under the floor, Coming right back. Coming right back. And plus the treatments themselves are hard on the immune system. So again, it makes it harder for the body to heal. And of course, you know this. Sure. Being a medical professional. Yeah. Yeah. We want to support the immune system, not kill it, not fight yeah. it. We want to work with it, give it what it needs so it can do what it knows how to do better than we know. Absolutely. It does it all by itself. We don't even have to know about it. We just got to make wise decisions and do things that are natural the way our bodies yep. were intended. What a concept. <laughs> yeah. So I, I, not, say... I, I, do, I do have to say, because, you know, we, we have an audience here and there are people that will uh, want to continue with their medicine, their medical route. And, you know, that's up to you. Absolutely. But if you're going to do that, do not overlook living the way you should, supporting your body, the way it was meant to be supported with real food, not stuff that is on packages with, they call them nutrition facts labels. Another name for that is warning labels. Yes. You know, processed foods, hyper-processed foods, and we're filling our mind with junk, watching horrible programming on TV, and, and we're breathing in toxic fumes and spraying pesticides, herbicides, and fungicides everywhere. And, you know, oh no, there's a bug in my house. Where's the raid? You know, and, and we're living in that environment. It's a right. toxic, deadly yep. environment. And you can change those things in your life. Yeah. And you can still do the medical route if you want, but take well, care of what you can. And I'm glad you brought that up because at some point I was going to make sure that I made this, you know, statement or disclaimer. I'm not giving medical advice. Always consult a medical professional, right, for any medical decision. But you want to make a good decision. That's why doctors often say, well, feel free to get a second opinion. Well, Absolutely. Why, why would that be necessary if everything was just clear cookie cutter, right? And that's why I recommend that second 
opinion be a naturopath, an osteopath, certain chiropractors like yourself um, that understand about, you know, gut health and all those things, helping the body heal can be, uh, you know, come on. when it comes to a second opinion, the fact that you're saying, hmm, something doesn't feel right, I want a second opinion. Understand the knowledge in you that has formed you from the things you have consumed in your life and turned you turned it into more of you that is in you. And if there's something kind of nagging at you saying, you know what the doctor is saying, it just doesn't feel right. There's a good chance it's not. And it might be that higher form of knowledge in you telling you that the plane hasn't landed. You have, you're not at the right solution. Get that second opinion. Yep. Yep. And you're going to love what I'm going to tell you in a couple of minutes. <laughs> so because of my frustration, even after finishing my internship, I, I walked away from the field. Because I got into medicine to help people. Right? And that's when, and I've, like I said, I've always had a passion to help people, loved emergency medicine. So I, Boy Scout, I got all the first aid merit badges. And I went through an EMT program uh, at the medical school where I was going and found out about the Pasadena Fire Department had a volunteer EMS or medical reserve program. And then I also, the doors just opened up wide for my music and comedy. So I play trumpet professionally, sing, do stand-up comedy, do some voiceover work. And so I said, well, I guess it's what I'm going to be doing. And with the passing of fire department, being on the reserve, since I'm a volunteer, I might have a flexible schedule. So I could go on tour. I could do studio gigs, right? We do all the medical coverage uh, along with the department for Rose Bowl events, World Cup soccer, music, concerts, uh, UCLA football games. You know, work third person in a paramedic ambulance. I mean, it's wonderful. And Mercy Matters, we are the best in the world in that. And we're making a dramatic difference. And again, we're just doing, helping the body heal when we're treating somebody. So, and I've always had a natural gift. First off, to help people with anxiety and, and that are freaked out and so forth. And that expanded actually helping them heal of phobias, addictions post-traumatic stress disorder, right? Because I was always fascinated that actually started because I thought, well, how, how did my brain, with part of it missing, be able to function like it has? And that made me do a deep dive into the brain of the conscious mind versus the subconscious mind. And I get a lot of intuitive hits. So I get intuition, exactly what you're talking about, to be at a certain place at a certain time to help somebody who might have died otherwise. So I'll literally hear, go to gate F. But my I assignment is gate it. E. I get it. Yep. And sure enough, within 20 seconds, I'm sorry to bother you. Well, how can I help you? My friend says something's going on with his heart. Where is he? He's right there. And sure enough, he probably had a couple of minutes to live. Right. And we're able to prevent that. So you're right. That intuition is so powerful, not just the in terms of- The wind blows, you hear it sound, but you don't know where it's coming from or where it is going. So it is with everyone that's filled with the spirit, you know? So you, you, you pay attention to these things, you follow, you obey. If you are getting that word, that feeling, and you know you're supposed to be somewhere, man, you better be there. Yes. So, and I, I, this might sound foreign to a lot of people. Oh, of course. It is there, and the more you listen to that voice, the more you realize, wow. This yep. is amazing. Yeah. Well, scripture says still is a still small voice, which is exactly right. I wish it was a screaming, yelling, hey, Bob, get out of it. Um, <laughs> and fortunately, I noticed that if it doesn't make sense, then I know it's a good hit. Because if it makes sense, well, that was just maybe a thought that I had, right? So, <laughs> you know, if, if I'm supposed to be at gate F and I hear go to gate E or vice versa, oh, that doesn't make sense. It must be a good hit, right? So it's awesome. So I noticed something when I was in the medical school program and treating cancer patients that a lot of them had unhealed emotional trauma. And studies have come out to estimate 85% of people in their hospital, they're in the hospital for all sorts of illnesses, have unhealed emotional trauma. There's a physician who's done a deep dive from Germany and estimates with people with cancer, it's closer to 90%, maybe hundred, close to 100%. And the other discovery, which is just mind blowing, is often where they have the cancer in their body is related to the emotional trauma. Hmm. So if it was a dad who lost a child, 
you'll often get testicular cancer. If it was a woman whose child almost died and they're nursing back to health, will often, and the trauma of that, will often get breast cancer. And then when the child gets better, the breast cancer goes away. Like with the testicular cancer, probably the best example is uh, what happens is the, the uh, testosterone goes to the roof, which makes the man more fertile and able to reproduce, to replace. That's biology, right? To replace the child mm. that was lost. And then when that happens, mm. then it's resolved and it goes away. That's interesting because, uh, you know, a testicular cancer or an expanding organ growing larger uh, could be indeed, as you just said, like an adaptive change. That's interesting. I never really considered that until you just said that. Yeah. So for me, I about jumped out of my skin because if there's an emotional trauma related to cancer, maybe even as the cause of a person having cancer. If you know where in the body it is, you can get an idea of what type of trauma it was. Betrayal or, you know, who knows? All these things are possible. Um, so I've, I've studied in terms of helping people emotionally healing with uh, Tony Robbins and Superconscious Recodes. I studied with Gary Craig, who developed DFT, also known as tapping. So mm -hmm. I don't know if you're very familiar with tapping, but it's just barely. And if I would try to, in my minimal understanding of what it is, recognize that, you know, in using almost like a physical exercise with an emotional process going on in the brain related or, well, I guess addressing a specific area of emotion and somehow that physical exercise is somehow deals with that. I don't know. I, yeah, are you explain ready? better. I, are you ready for this? Yeah. This is unbelievable. When there is emotional trauma, so it might have been something that happened to you or you witnessed, it causes an electrical disturbance in your nervous system. Now, the term is electrical perturbation. I kind of like call it like an electrical tumor. And, and science has found out there's actually a little electrical shock that happens when we have an emotional trauma. So the whole idea of, of dreaming is to process the events of the day so we don't get post-traumatic stress disorder, but sometimes it's so much that the brain can't do that and it can't resolve that electrical problem. So the challenge, since it's electrical, it doesn't show up on any scans. So what was discovered with the FT, if you tap on the end of a nerve, so very specific spots where nerves come to the surface of the skin. That's not why it's just anywhere, right? That it sends an electrical signal down the nerve. It's just physics, right? Hit it, sends an electrical signal down the nerve. So let's say the person was in a bad car crash and they're having nightmares about the headlights, right? If they think about the headlights as they tap on these spots, the brain knows where in the nervous system that electrical perturbation is, sends that electricity being generated to it, and it's like defibrillating, like we defibrillate somebody in cardiac arrest because they okay. have an electrical problem. It resolves the electrical problem many times. That's what this does, and it collapses it with a phobia. Usually one session with someone with a phobia, and it's gone, and it doesn't come back unless they get re-traumatized because it's not in the nervous system anymore. And there's always now, are we talking about Are we talking about little phobias like... Uh you know, balloons, tin foil, and spiders, or are we talking about- We're talking about- Major traumatic me. phobias, I was violated, and the big stuff. The big stuff, yeah. Wow. So the phobia, there's a fear of something. Uh, I had a, helped a gal who for 56 years has not been able to sleep well at night because any little sound, even the beautiful rustling of the leaves, would wake her up in a startle of those she was being attacked for 56 years, gone in one session. Oh, because that, because she was attacked at some point? Because it at some at, uh, when she was about six years old, there was a, in the middle of the night, there was a big family thing. The uncle, I guess, flipped out, right? I'm gonna kill you, all this kind of, not to her, but as a little child, right? She thought, oh no, I'm in danger. Mm -hmm. So wow. that's stayed with all that time. And now it's gone because, again, the wisdom of the body, 
You know, it's a self healing mm-hmm. miracle. We just need to kind of help it when we do. And your body can't heal when it's under stress. And one of the things that was interesting about the EFT, that even if you just tap on the spots, and in the show notes, I did a little YouTube training. You can put the link on there, you know, so people, excuse you, do a follow-along, three-minute follow-along for stress release. Because it triggers the autonomic nervous system and it gives the stress release. So just tapping. But if you're dealing with something, right, and you think about it, then that's even more, more powerful. Now, sometimes, sometimes the person knows what the cause is. Sometimes they don't. Like with this gal, she had no idea that it was related to what happened to her when she was six. Okay? But her subconscious mind knew that was the deal. And so as we tapped, all of a sudden, <gasps> I always tell people, if memory pops up, even if it doesn't make sense, tell me. Back to a gentleman who uh, uh, came back from the war, severe abdominal pain, lower right quadrant, CAT scans, MRIs, ultrasound, couldn't find anything wrong. And so again, just worked on the pain. Just, okay, let's just tap on the pain. And if a memory comes up, and so by, like six minutes in, <laughs> go, well, what? Oh, it has nothing to do with this. Well, that's okay. Just tell me what it was. Oh, we were on patrol and a landmine went off. And my best friend was to my right, and he took the brunt of the blast. We didn't have a medic in our platoon, and he just pleaded with me, you know, don't let me die, don't let me die. And I didn't have any medical training, and he died. I said, oh, I'm so sorry. So out of curiosity, where was your friend injured? Oh, right here. Exactly where he's been feeling that pain for years. Crazy. Isn't that something? Yeah. So obviously, we stopped working on the pain. And whack, went back to work on that trauma, mm-hmm. and then the pain went away. You know, early on, I was saying that there's only a handful of things we can do, regardless of the condition, whether it's cancer or the flu or a headache or, you know, whatever it is, nutrition, exercise, rest, mental well-being, and such an important component to health. And that includes dealing with the negative thoughts, memories, you know, stored up in there, hindering you from having your full potential. Absolutely. In fact, a great story related to that friend of mine had cancer. And so I talked about these very same things, you know, make your body hostile to cancer cells on my website, uh, thehiddensecrettohealing.com. There's a 45 minute master class on how to keep your body hostile to cancer cells, what cancer cells need to survive, right? So just make your body hostile to cancer cells is a good start. And he was doing the opposite. He agreed with everything. Yes, yes, yes. He was doing the opposite. And what I found out was in his childhood, he didn't get much love. Getting cancer, he was getting all this love and attention. He didn't want to get better. Wow. Yeah, subconsciously. Now, consciously, he said, oh, I want, you know, I want to get better. But subconsciously, oh, I feel safe. Your subconscious mind always wants to keep you safe, right? And he sabotaged his healing. Crazy making. I'm Dr. Haley interrupting this podcast. As a thank you for listening, here's a coupon code you can use at HaleyNutrition.com. During the month of July 2024, get 20 bucks off your entire purchase of $200 or more. If you're purchasing our famous raw frozen aloe vera gel and have been only getting two bottles at a time, this is an excellent opportunity to upgrade your order to four bottles. The summertime is brutal to the frozen food industry and two bottles just melt too quickly. But four bottles ship a lot better. They will still melt quite a bit in the mail for three days, but will arrive much colder than two bottles. Or use the coupon to try some of our other products. The Aya Greens vegetable and fruit powder is a customer favorite. An excellent way to get your phytonutrition. The Youth Therm Aloe Cream is our number one add-on product. I use it every day. So head over to HaleyNutrition.com and use the code HAPPYJULY. One word, no spaces. For $20 off your order of $200 or more now through the end of July 2024. If you're enjoying this podcast, please give it a thumbs up or leave a review, depending on which platform you're on. Thanks again, and enjoy the rest of the show. I wonder if I can tell you one more story. Please. Um, 
So uh, years ago, I invented a technique that takes away headaches in about 30 seconds based on eye movement. And this woman sent me an email and said, uh, does this work on migraines? I said, yes, but you got to do it as soon as the migraine starts, because once it gets in, it's like a, like a claw. And then EFT, I didn't know about, I, I should say, uh, EFT actually works pretty good for migraines, okay? except they can have a hard time, you know, <laughs> tapping themselves when their head hurts. But anyways, um, so I said, well, why do you have migraines? She said, well, Bob, I don't know. Ding, 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 right? So I, she was up in Seattle. I called her and I said, I'm going to email you the tapping points. We'll do a session on the phone. And she had a migraine at the point, which is great, right? The more present you are, the more the brain can zero in what's going on. And so just focus on the nausea, the light sensitivity, right? The pain. And all of a sudden I heard that still small voice, 14. 14. Mary, what happened when you were 14? And she started to bawl. Hmm. She says, well, my mom got remarried and my stepdad started sexually abusing me. Oh, Mary, I'm so sorry. So, Mary, out of curiosity, when did your migraine start? When I was 14. And how did they play into the abuse? <gasps> That's what you wait for, that aha moment. It's just the only time he wouldn't abuse me is when I had a migraine. Mary, mm. you are so powerful. You were giving yourself migraines to keep you safe. I said, is he even still alive? No, he's passed away. And you still have migraines? Yeah, not all the time, but occasionally. I bet you have a migraine you don't feel safe. She thought about it. She says, oh, I've never put that together. So obviously we stopped working on the migraine and went to that trauma. Now, yeah. I'm, I'm all in favor of talk therapy, especially initially. Get it out. But if it's an electrical problem in your nervous system, continually talking about it can actually make it more embedded. Right. So initially, I think that's great. But that's what's the wonderful thing about the tapping. Right. And since hers was abuse over a period of time, it took multiple sessions with um, post-traumatic stress disorder from like a car crash, usually one or two sessions and it's, you know, and it's gone. The, the tapping first, I, I want to know about the eye movement as well, but the tapping program, is this something that people always have to be coached through? Is it a program where they learn about tapping and they do it on their own as often as they need or? Yes, that's a great question. I, as I mentioned, I studied in person with, with Gary Craig who developed this and he's an engineer. So he's very, you know, mechanical and people have done versions of tapping that make it really, oh, like you're lining your chakras and that's what's happening. And people go, what, what? It's all physics, right? Electricity is physics and your body's physiology. Well, you did simplify it, you know, and the, the nerves conduct electricity essentially, and there's synaptic endings and there, you know, there's connections that are made and the electricity is chemicals, like a chemical electricity yeah. as change happens along the course of a nerve, a muscle. Um, so it does make sense that in, I mean, just the fact that if I go like this, I can feel that. So there's an electrical signal that is triggered by the tap. It makes sense. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so to answer, I, I don't, to answer your question, I don't really understand how it fully works because the mind and, and the pathways are way too complex for me to understand. Yes. But I do understand that we can develop patterns and say, Hey, you know what? This works. <laughs> well, and, and again, that's a great description because our brain, there's not a computer the size of this, you know, probably the city of Los Angeles that can duplicate what the brain can do. It's phenomenal. And your subconscious part of your mind, as I understand, records everything you've ever seen, tasted, smells, all your life. It's just a recording. I mean, and let's face it, you are missing part of your brain and there's no, no evidence of it in who you are because exactly. somehow other areas make up for it. Yep. 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 Absolutely. Love it. And what's powerful about that understanding of the EFT is that it works even if you don't think it works. So they had two psychologists that were taking training from Gary Craig, and they both knew it was, it was snake oil. It was bunk, right? And he said, well, do you have any issues you're working on? Oh yeah, I still have some issues, everybody does. Oh, great. So you guys do it on each other. 
So you know it's not a placebo effect. You know it's not going to work, and it worked on both of them. <laughs> hey, you know what? Even if it is a placebo effect, I don't have a problem with that. If it's a really good placebo and it works all the time. There you go. Yes. <laughs> so now, it, you can do this on yourself, right? And like in the video that I did, people can just follow along, right, and have great results. It's even better if somebody taps on you. So it's the same reason. If I tickle myself, the nerves are being stimulated, but I'm not really laughing. If somebody else does that, it's the same nerves, right? But it's more effective if somebody else is tapping. So and it's so okay, simple. No, and someone's going to be someone's going to be listening to this and saying, "What videos are you talking about?" I'm not going to make it part of this video. Instead, what I will do below this video in the description, just so whoever's listening knows, there will be a link to the video that Bob Ross is talking about. Good. And if you're on my blog page, it'll be down there. If you're on the iTunes podcast. It, there will be, you might have to copy and paste it, but it will be there, the information, so you can find the video he's talking about. It'll be there. Beautiful. Excellent. So since I found that connection between people that have illness of any kind, and especially cancer with the emotional stuff, I've actually started a coaching program, an online course and coaching program for people that have cancer. So, um, so I developed this, I call it my hidden secret brain technique. So I first did it just because I found that I was self-sabotaging myself um, with my success. I would literally pull the rug out from stuff that was just handed to me. I go, why, why did I do that? Well, I had a belief from childhood that it wasn't safe to be successful. And your brain wants to keep you safe, right? So until that subconscious belief, because that's going to regulate your life, you know, if you like people think, oh, that money is the root of all evil. Well, that's not what scripture says. It says the love of money is the root of yeah. all evil. Big, big difference, right? But if you think- See, You know, and that's, that's not such a uncommon thought. A lot of people don't think they can be successful and there's something wrong with that. Um, so it's not like it was weird for you to have that because a lot of us think, oh, you know, I can't, charge for what I do because I'm helping people and they need my help. No, wait a second. If, if, if you don't have the financial means to help people, you can't help them. You know, exactly. uh, a worker is worth his wages. So <laughs> I understand that. And for anyone struggling with that, you know, your talents are worth something. Charge yeah. for them. Charge for them. <laughs> yes. Absolutely. So you can help more people. Yes. So I developed this brain technique to help reprogram the subconscious mind. Again, just some invention ideas that came. And, and then all of a sudden I realized, wait a minute, this can be used for people to heal from their emotional traumas that have medical problems, in particular cancer, since that was my specialty. And one of the things that fascinated me when I was in this medical school program was the placebo effect. So as you know, and your listeners may know, so during a a drug trial, some people get the real drug, some people get a sugar pill, but they don't know they're getting the sugar pill. And a good percentage of people will actually get healed of their disease from taking a sugar pill. Because? Because they believe it's the real drug. Because they believe your faith has made you whole. Yep. And uh, if they're told about side effects, they'll have the side effects, but they weren't because given they anything, believe. Which means the brain has that built in. In fact, I was raised in a wonderful Christian home. I mean, the, the definition of, of love and compassion and caring, right? Kids would flock to my house. So I could never understand. Let's go to your house and play. No, I want to come to your house. And I could never understand why God asked for our faith in healing. I mean, even Jesus said, your faith has made you heal. Uh, why do you need my faith? You know? It's God go, oh, I wish I could pull this off if only Bobby would believe. And then it hit. Wait a minute. That placebo effect means God has already put that miraculous healing into us. And faith is what turns it on. Or like to think like if the faith was in a in a in a pipe and you're turning on the faucet to let it flow. You know, just as Moses lifted up the snake in the desert. It wasn't a magic snake. It was a physical something that was used 
to break that barrier uh, to where they would be able to lock on something tangible and put their mm -hmm. faith in it because we are so afraid of the spiritual. We work in the physical and that's something I can see. So that's why I can believe in it. But it is already there, as you said. Yep. And it, it, it's funny how we use these physical gymnastics to <laughs> tap into what's already available to us. Uh huh. Yep. Oh, one thing before I forget, I discovered that EFT, the tapping, actually works on medical issues. So for the past, I think, 20 years, I've also been working as a motion picture set medic, uh, especially because of my fire department experience. I'll be brought in for like high risk stunts. And I'm in case things go, you know, stunts go wrong or people have heart attacks, get electrocuted, all sorts of stuff. So I've been able to work on the Amazing Race and SEAL Team SWAT, did a couple of the Star Wars <laughs> and American Ninja Warrior, right? And I had a, a woman who came to me and she said, oh, I'm so embarrassed. I'm so embarrassed. I said, well, don't be embarrassed. You know? And she says, well, I have really bad menstrual cramps. I kind of had that idea because she was on the floor, just curled up in a ball, writhing in pain. And I have medication that helps, but this is the first time the medication hasn't helped. And I can't work. I, I can't hardly get off the floor. I said, well, you can't take more medication. That'll be too much. But I've, I've got a technique. It's out of the box, but th this, this should help you. I said, anything, anything. So I did the tapping and all she focused on was the pain, right? And then the thought popped up. Oh, and also had her tap on the thought of, I'm going to lose my job if I can't get back, right? Because she was the head of her department. And in six minutes, it was resolved. Yep. It's a beautiful yeah. thing. Isn't that a beautiful thing? Yes. So just Absolutely. a couple of quick stories uh, regarding the placebo effect is this is fully documented. There was a gentleman who had severe multiple personality disorders. One of his personalities, say James, had full-blown diabetes, type 1. Pancreas didn't work at all, insulin dependent. Another one of his personalities say Jimmy or the or James or Jimmy, whatever it was, the opposite, uh, had a fully functioning pancreas, no diabetes. So was there anything wrong with his, di with his pancreas? No. So what, was turning, so what was turning it on and off? His mind. Thoughts. That's how powerful that thing is. Isn't that crazy, Macon? <laughs> so, so I believe I, can, I kind of modified my brain technique to release the placebo effect without having to have the regular faith, right? Because it's hard, yep. especially if you know, you're diagnosed with something serious, to have the faith that you know, this can be healed or you can be healed. So needless to say, I'm quite excited about the possibilities on the horizon. That's great. And I, I, I understand what you're talking about because I kind of believe I practice the same things in my own personal life. Nice. So I get it. I get it. Yeah. yeah. Good stuff. Um, what can you tell us about the eye movements? So have you heard of EMDR? So eye movement, desensitization, reprocessing. So it came out before, I think before, even before EFT. And it was the concept of using eye movement to help resolve traumas. And I trained with the gal who invented it. And then I heard about EFT. I go, oh, that's interesting. And I found out that what takes an hour and a half with the eye movement takes 15 minutes with tapping. So I said, well, tapping is more efficient. That's what I'm going to focus on. And in fact, my understanding is now, even the EMDR, they're adding alternate tappings as well as the, you know, the, the eye movement. Because it turns out the eye movement actually creates an electrical signal but not as powerful as when you're tapping right on the nerve. At, at this point in your life, do you fear cancer? I do not. What would you do if you found you had cancer? The first thing I'd do is I'd make myself hostile, body hostile to cancer cells, make sure my pH is good. I don't want to be acidic. Flood my body with oxygen. So an example of that is, well, the most powerful, of course, is an IV of vitamin C because in the body... It converts to hydrogen peroxide, which balances your pH, your benefit there. And then the oxygen is released from the hydrogen peroxide and literally floods your body with oxygen. And so it's kind of a, a multi-benefit. Uh, a couple of years ago, they came out with liposomal vitamin C. And basically, because vitamin C is very sensitive to heat, can easily be destroyed, right? And it's 100 degrees in your body, right? 
So they found that, and, and then if you're taking a pill of vitamin C, they use high pressure to compact it, which is going to be high heat. And so it may say a thousand milligrams, but probably has maybe 50 left in the tablet, right? But it's, hmm. but the FDA allows them to say, you know, thousand milligrams with liposomal, they take phospholipids to encapsulate the vitamin C to protect it, right? From the stomach acid, from the heat, all that. So they estimate you probably absorb 95% compared to an IV with liposomal vitamin C. That's interesting. Yes, yeah, so you, you don't have to get an IV and get stuck, right? Okay. Take it on your own, and you can take big doses because therapeutically, well, you know this, that when they say a recommended dose is, you know, 65 milligrams a day, that does nothing. That just keeps you from getting yeah, screwed. And I'm not fully understanding the phospholipid because I'm saying, wait a second, vitamin C is water soluble, but if you put a phospholipid, now it's fat soluble. How does that work? I don't know. Yeah. My mind's trying to process that. I don't get it. I don't know. That, that's all right. Um, yeah, so, so that's the first thing I would do. I would, of course, do the hyperthermia. Now, I found out that in the United States, a physician told me that they can use hyperthermia, but they can't do it to the degree that it actually is the most effective. They're prohibited from doing that. So I'd probably go to Germany. Um, Germany's got a great natural cancer <laughs> therapy program. It's, right? it's crazy because it's like, wait, you're in the uh, United States. Run! <laughs> <laughs> oh, I know. I know. Oh, my goodness. And I would do a deep dive. Uh, to make sure there weren't any un, unhealed emotional wounds, because we all have them, yep. you know, life is that way. Yeah, and um, the other thing, and you kind of alluded to this on the front end of this conversation is, okay, well, where is the cancer and why? And why? Exactly. Why there? Why the pancreas? Why the testicle? Why the breast? Yeah whether it's a, a an emotional connection or an adaptation to something else, you know, yeah, I, I believe there's always a cause. And that's definitely a stronger position to be in because if cancer is just some evil beast looking to attack the weak, then you really have no say in it. Right. But if there's a cause and you can identify, then you're in charge. And I will say, you can actually. Yeah, absolutely. And I will say during my whole cancer scare. I don't think I don't think there was one single time where any physician talked about what could be the cause of this. It was just okay, this is what we have, this is what we're gonna do treatment wise. Yeah. 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 And I, I like the way you said also, because I never really heard that terminology, make my body a hostile environment to cancer. Which is really making it a healthy environment. Good environment. <laughs> yes. To <laughs> healthy life. <laughs> yes. Well, and I know you're one of your specialties is gut health. And so much of the immune system is, is dependent on, on gut health. So that's the other thing I'd be doing. Boy, I'd make sure that I would restrict my diet so that I, you know, give my immune system the best chance to work its magic. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah we, we can look at it and say, okay, what's the magic bullet? And that's the wrong approach because now, you know, even if it's a, even if it's a food, everyone knows that, you know, my product is an aloe vera product and there's reasons why that would help fight cancer and support mm. the immune system. And if you say, oh, this is amazing. I love the science. I'm just going to drink, you know, a gallon of aloe vera every day. Now, wait a second, wait a second, wait a second. You just turned aloe vera into a drug. Mm. And you just switched from a whole natural approach to a medical approach, mm. which is I'm going to attack this with aloe vera. That would be, you know, magic bullets um, are not wise approaches. Right. Lifestyle changes, addressing nutrition, exercise, rest, mental well-being, properly functioning nervous system, de-stress your body, do the things that are healthy for it, change your lifestyle. You know, yeah. that's an approach. That's an and, approach. And if I can add something to that, because that is yeah. music to my ears, um, that there is a physiology to every emotional state. So let's say you're going to, you're asked to be given, give a little talk at work the next day and you're nervous about it. Now that's just a thought. It's the next day. You might even get a standing ovation, 
but you're nervous. It affects your body the same way every time. Your stomach acids increase, muscles contract, heart rate goes up right? every single time. A touchdown is scored. Yes, right? The people open up. People with severe depression, they close down. So with severe depression, the physiology for the body is head down, slump shoulders, shallow breathing, upper chest. Mm -hmm. Every single time, they cannot be severely depressed unless their body's in that physiology. So, because I went through a period where I was severely depressed, life just kind of fell apart. And I went to a, a psychologist and he didn't even know this. So guess what my physiology was when I was getting therapy? It, he could he could have given me the secret to life and it would run right over my head. Right? Hmm. So you got if he just said, Bob, stand up, throw your shoulders back, take some deep breaths, right? That would have speeded up my healing. And when we're under stress, we tend to breathe shallow. Stress for anything. So you're probably familiar with things like the four, five, six breathing concept. So you breathe in for a count of four, you hold it for a count of five and you blow out for a count of six. So by focusing on the numbers, you're focusing on the numbers as opposed to the crazy stuff that's going on. By doing that, you're holding it and you're actually absorbing more oxygen. And then if you can remember when you, you always breathe in through your nose and out through your mouth. And if you breathe, when you breathe in, if you push your belly out, that opens up the lungs and you actually get more oxygen and absorb more oxygen. And within three minutes of doing that, if you're under stress, you'll feel yeah, I'm, I also, you know, have heard similar things that in doing that other benefits, I guess, or possibly it's exactly what you're talking about. You're essentially taking an approach that's going to take you out of that fear reptilian brain into the higher brain centers where you're grounding, not in the sense of being connected to the earth for the electron flow, but grounding mentally and emotionally and yeah going back to that higher thought process than, you know, oh my goodness, I'm, I'm dying. I'm going to die right now. You know, it, that's the reptilian brain thinking I got to escape. There's a bear in the room. Right. Yeah, ab absolutely. Yeah. Good stuff. Yeah. It's good stuff. Hey Bob, where do we find out more about this? Where's it? What, what are your websites? And, and have you ever, uh, do you have any favorite books on the topic as well? So um, since the brain technique is my invention, there won't be any books. I, I'm, I'm hoping to someday write in a book, but it, I'm constantly modifying and changing and finding new cool things. But so uh, two websites, the hidden secret to healing.com. So the hidden secret to healing.com. And there's a 40 free 45 minute masterclass there. And then for the emotional healing, because maybe someone has, you know, phobias, addictions is the hidden secret to emotional healing. So the hidden secret to healing and the hidden secret to emotional healing.com. Good stuff. All right. So I'll make sure there's links to that below the video on the podcast page, on the blog page, everywhere you can imagine. Beautiful. It'll be there. Easy to find Bob Ross. Um, any closing thoughts? Anything that you wish I had asked? Oh, well, I wish you'd ask me, you know, how's it to live being so handsome like this? Because it must be different. <laughs> No, I already know. I already know that. I live it every day. Come on. Come on now. Come on. Come on. Um, well, the takeaway that I hope people get is exactly what you have emphasized, is that we have a greater capacity to heal than we're obviously told, right? We're told, oh, in fact, in the medical school system, doctors were taught, you know more about the patient than the patient knows. But that's not true. That happened to my sister. She was having a problem and they went, oh, that's just in your mind. No, I'm having this issue, right? Ah, it's just in your mind. And they sent her away from the ER. Two days later, she's rushed to the hospital with a legitimate and needed surgery, right? Oh, the wisdom of your body, intuition, sometimes, of course, just the pain, but sometimes, oh, something's not right. I can feel it. Something's not right. Always tap into that. Yeah. Yeah. Pay attention. Absolutely. Pay attention. That, that still small voice, which sometimes does yell at you. Um, but, you know, you, you, you shouldn't let it get to that point. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Yes. Uh, Bob, thank you so much for joining me. I appreciate thank you me. and uh, love you. what you're doing. 
Ah, it's been a great pleasure. Thank you, my friend. I hope you enjoyed that episode today on The Dr. Haley Show. Make sure to hit subscribe on whichever platform you are listening to this. If this episode made you think of someone, go ahead, take a screenshot, and share this exact episode with them. You can catch the show notes for this episode on www.drhaley.com. If you want to geek out with Dr. Michael Haley on other radical health topics, be sure to check out his YouTube channel where he posts exclusive video content. All the details are at www.drhaley.com and we can't wait to hang out with you on the next episode.